it takes a good teacher to inspire them, Joe. So you're a good teacher to, to get them interested in science. A lot of t times it's, for me, fifth grade, it was in fifth grade. Um, actually, it was second grade. Liquid nitrogen is just one of the most incredible substances ever. In addition to doing this superconductor demo, um, pull that thing up, let's get that thing going again too. Um, I grew up in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, so we went to the physics department there, and this was like a little field trip, second grade. They took a rose, dunked it into a, a big doer of liquid nitrogen, and I'll show you what a doer is in just a second. He's filling up the demo again. Took it out, smashed it on the uh, table, boom, broke into a thousand pieces. Also did it with a tennis ball, took it, and that was just great as a second grader. So I, I wanted to figure out why that was the case. Much like y'all probably want to figure out why is it that this... All right, here, we're going to zoom up in here. I want y'all to watch this. I want y'all to watch this real close. All right, watch it when it... Um... Now see how it's just sitting there? Yes, sir. All right, so it's cooling down though. It's got liquid nitrogen. Oh, look, 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 there it goes. See how it lifted up? That It got below that temperature, and then those fields could not since they cannot penetrate that material um, below its critical temperature, it had to rise up. So that those field lines would not interact. Uh, excuse me, I have a question about nanotubes. Yes, sir. <laughs> I have a question about nanotubes. Yep, okay. go right ahead. How do you manipulate nanotubes positions and change their shape? Manipulating carbon nanotube positions. Well, you got to have very, very patient graduate students with very tiny tweezers. No, um, we we don't do that um, in in that manner. Um, that that would be useful from a scientific aspect. But if we want to commercial thing, commercialize things and make flying cars and excellent solar cells and other sorts of space elevators, we have to have a way to bulk process it. So the way we manipulate the carbon nanotubes is, for instance, with photolithography to begin the um, the patterning of where these carbon nanotubes will do will grow before they even grow. Sort of like when you um, plant a field. You plant when I planted my garden. I put seeds where I wanted um, the lettuce to grow. I didn't intermingle those with the seeds where I wanted the strawberries to grow, or something along those lines. So you you just put the seeds where only where we want the carbon nanotubes to grow. And that's how we manipulate. It used to spin a lot better, but I've, it, you can see how it's got like a chunk taken out of it maybe, right there on that top corner. So it's not perfectly balanced anymore. It used to spin and spin and spin and spin and spin just constantly, um, but now it's not perfectly balanced, and so it eventually slows down like you see. So I need to get a, need to get a new magnet. What are some of the other processes that they're trying to experiment with to grow longer too? I couldn't hear you, Jeff. What are some of the other processes that they're experimenting with to grow longer to besides chemical vapor deposition? Is there some other process that's going to make them as long as they need for a space elevator, so to speak? Yeah, that is a, a challenge um, to, to have a continuously extruding way to grow this carbon nanotube. It's certainly a, a, a difficult um, prospect. There, there's several different ways. There's called the arc discharge and the laser discharge method for growing carbon nanotubes. And basically, you've got electrodes and with the laser discharge, you hit this carbon electrode with the laser and a lot of stuff flies off and a little small portion of that are carbon nanotubes. So it's difficult to see how you would scale that up to make kilometer long carbon nanotubes. The other is electric arc discharge, which is again, similar thing, but instead of passing a laser and hitting a target, you charge these plates and so it sends basically a lightning bolt that again hits the plate and you know stuff flies off just like you would expect and some of those are carbon nanotubes so the chemical vapor deposition method <clears throat> has a way of constantly adding these these gas precursors to allow you to um, reach some pretty substantial lengths um, the main problem right now is catalyst poisoning that's where the catalyst iron in our case that we put down but you can also do nickel and cobalt get crusted over with with um, amorphous carbon so that the crystalline carbon, the carbon nanotube, can't get through that crust. Now what you can do is inject a little bit of water vapor 
which then oxidizes that carbon, amorphous carbon crust, allows it to break up, sort of, and then the carbon nanotube extrudes out from that way. So CBD is actually a pretty good method. Uh, there's another one called HIPCO, high pressure carbon monoxide, CO.